What if I told you there's a compound that acts like a cellular shuttle bus, transporting fatty acids into your mitochondria while carrying an extra molecular backpack that can boost your brain chemistry? Today, we're diving deep into acetyl L-carnitine or Alcar, a naturally occurring compound that's been showing some seriously impressive results in clinical trials for cognitive decline, depression, and neuropathy. Unlike regular L-carnitine, Alcar crosses the blood-brain barrier more efficiently due to its acetyl group, making it particularly relevant for neurological application. I'm gonna break down exactly what the peer-reviewed research shows system by system, so you can make an informed decision about whether this supplement deserves a place in your protocol. Let me explain how Alcar actually works in your body. Think of Alcar as a cellular shuttle bus that transports fatty acids into mitochondria where they're converted to ATP energy. But unlike regular L-carnitine, Alcar carries an extra acetyl backpack that can be donated to make important brain chemicals. The acetyl group acts like a molecular building block for acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter crucial for memory and learning. Ando and colleagues demonstrated that Alcar enhanced cholinergic activities and increased acetylcholine synthesis in aged rats, improving learning capacity. Alcar also functions as a cellular bodyguard by reducing oxidative stress and protecting mitochondria from damage. Liu showed Alcar decreased lipid peroxidation and oxidized nucleotides in brain tissue, demonstrating superior antioxidant properties compared to regular L-carnitine. Finally, Alcar works by suppressing inflammatory pathways. It was also found that Alcar suppressed neuroinflammation markers and restored cellular cleanup mechanisms called autophagy. Now let's dive into what the research shows for each body system. Let's take a look at Alcar's main affect on energy and metabolism. Malaguanera and colleagues conducted a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial with 96 elderly subjects over 70 years with chronic fatigue syndrome. Alcar supplementation produced significant reductions in physical fatigue, mental fatigue, and fatigue severity, all with p-values less than 0.001, plus improvements in functional status and cognitive functions. In another study, the same researcher studied 121 patients with hepatic encephalopathy in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Alcar showed significant improvements in physical and mental fatigue, fatigue severity, and physical activity levels. Is there literature to suggest Alcar can help with fertility or testosterone? Concerning fertility, there is some promising human data, but specifically for sperm quality. Lenzi et al. conducted a placebo placebo-controlled, double-blind, randomized trial with 60 men with oligoastheno-teratozoospermia. Combined L-carnitine at 2 grams per day and Alcar at 1 gram per day for 6 months significantly improved sperm motility, with the most significant improvements in patients with lower baseline levels. Belursia et al. found in a placebo-controlled trial that Alcar alone or combined improved sperm motility in men with idiopathic asthenozoospermia Geospermia. A systematic review and meta-analysis by Cole and colleagues of eight randomized controlled trials showed carnitine significantly improved total sperm motility, progressive sperm motility, and sperm morphology, but without demonstrable effect on clinical pregnancy rates. However, and this is important, there are no peer-reviewed human studies specifically examining Alcar's direct effects on testosterone levels in healthy men. What about cognitive functioning? In aged Fisher, 344 rats, Alcar at 100 milligrams per kilogram for three months enhanced cholinergic activities, increased choline uptake, acetylcholine synthesis, and improved learning capacity in cognitive tasks. While this provides mechanistic evidence for cognitive functioning benefits, human data is more mixed. Spagnoli et al in 1991 reported a one-year study with 130 Alzheimer's patients finding slower deterioration in 13 of 14 outcome measures with significant improvements in blessed dementia scale, logical intelligence, and apraxia tests. However, Thal et al. conducted a larger one-year multi-center double-blind placebo-controlled trial with 431 early-onset Alzheimer's disease patients where Alcar at 3 grams daily failed to slow overall cognitive decline. Here's what's really interesting. Yang's team conducted a 28-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial with 56 patients with vascular cognitive impairment. Alcar at 1.5 grams daily significantly improved Montreal cognitive
cognitive assessment scores, particularly attention and language domains. Interestingly for depression, a systematic review and meta-analysis examining Alcar supplementation for depressive symptoms found significant reductions in depressive symptoms compared to placebo with comparable effects to established antidepressants, but fewer adverse effects. What about TMAO and Alcar? Is there a link and should we be careful? Alcar, like other carnitine forms, can be metabolized by gut bacteria into trimethylamine, which the liver converts into trimethylamine N-oxide, TMAOs, a compound associated with increased cardiovascular risk. While Alcar may potentially produce less TMAO than L-carnitine from red meat, studies suggest it can still contribute to elevated TMAO levels, especially with long-term or high-dose use. To mitigate this, using probiotics or prebiotics that alter gut microbiota composition or co-supplementing with compounds like garlic or berberine, which have some evidence to show they may reduce TMAO formation. Ultimately, the impact of Alcar on TMAO varies by individual and those at risk for heart disease should weigh potential benefits against the possibility of increased TMAO and talk with their doctor. What about safety and tolerability? Here's the good news. Alcar appears to be very well tolerated. Montgomery conducted a meta-analysis of 21 double-blind randomized controlled trials and found Alcar showed safe and tolerable long-lasting effects with adverse events being mild and not significantly different from placebo. Veronese's meta-analysis of 791 individuals demonstrated fewer adverse effects compared to standard antidepressants. Another study found long-term treatment for up to 33 months with 3 grams daily was well tolerated in HIV-positive patients. Additionally, Yang et al.'s study reported adverse events in 13.3% of Alcar-treated patients versus 7.7% in placebo group with one patient death considered unrelated to study medication. Common side effects based on clinical trials include gastrointestinal effects like nausea and stomach upset, central nervous system effects like restlessness, agitation, and sleep disturbances at higher doses. There are some caution groups to be aware of, those with seizure disorders due to theoretical concern about cholinergic activity, potential anticoagulant interactions that may enhance warfarin effects, and those with bipolar disorder as it may worsen symptoms in remission phase. How should Alcar be taken? Based on the clinical trial data, here are the evidence-based dosing ranges. Keep in mind, Alcar is not an approved therapy. These are just the dosages used in these studies. For cognitive impairment, 1.5 to 3 grams daily is a good dosage. For depression, 0.5 to 3 grams daily. For neuropathy, 1.5 to 2 grams daily. And finally, for fatigue studies, 2 to 3 grams daily, pharmacokinetic data shows a half-life of 4.2 hours, peak concentration at 3.1 hours, Hours and bioavailability of 14 to 18% for oral supplements. Montgomery noted that 1.5 to 2 grams daily was used in the vast majority of clinical studies. For administration, take with food to minimize GI upset, divide doses throughout the day, and safety has been established for up to 33 months of treatment. That's all from me today, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.